Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Shack. In today's episode, as promised in the last C64 video, we're going to take a look at clearing up the vertical banding we're getting on the screen by installing and calibrating this LumaFix 64. When installed, we should be able to radically improve the display. Details of where I got this from are in the description below. So what's the problem and how is this supposed to fix it? The vertical banding on the screen is a result of noise coming from the VIC-2 chip and also a degradation of the S-Video signal. These artifacts are less visible on an older CRT due to the inherently lower resolution of the display and the analog nature of the signal. Here's the pinout of the VIC-2 chip and the noise we're experiencing is coming from the following pins. The AEC and BA pins which are related to the system bus. The CAS and RAS pins which are related to RAM access. And the PHI0 pin which is related to the system clock. Predominantly the signals we need to clean up are the AEC and PHI0. The way the LumaFix 64 deals with this is by sitting between the VIC-2 and the rest of the system, inverting the noise signals and blending them back into a cleaner signal before being passed to the display. Looking at the LumaFix we can see there are tiny potentiometers in order that we can adjust the amount of blend or noise inversion for both the PHI0 and the AEC. But there's also a third potentiometer called CHR, so what does this do? Depending on motherboard revision, the C64 video port looks like this. We can see that the signal separates aspects of the video and audio into different pins to reduce interference. We have luminance, ground, audio out, composite video, audio in, and on newer revisions, chrominance or CHR. We also have a plus five volts line on pin eight and pin seven isn't connected. So Luma carries the brightness signal, the black and white aspects of the image, CHR carries the colour aspects of the signal and it's interference on the CHR line that can cause colour saturation or other artefacts on the display. So the LumaFix 64 gives us the ability to adjust that also. So now we understand how and why it should work, let's fit it to the board and see what improvements can be made. Once the keyboard's removed, we're going to need to remove this heatsink. Firstly, my chip puller won't work with this on, and secondly, the actual keyboard won't fit with the LumaFix 64 in place and this heatsink. So using a bit of dental floss, we'll just use a gentle sawing motion back and forth. It cuts through the adhesive and you can remove the heatsink. And be very careful pulling chips if you don't have much experience a quick squirt of IPA and this chip will come up as good as new. And with the VIC-2 chip all cleaned up, it's time to insert it into the LumaFix 64. Make sure the notch in the socket and the notch in the chip are at the same end before you put them in. The legs on the VIC-2 chip are a little splayed out and too wide for the socket, so a little trick would be to put it on a flat surface and very gently bend the pins in. It should then fit straight into the socket with minimal pressure. This really is a simple but ingenious solution, I can't wait to see what results we get. Again, when fitting the chip into the board, Make sure the notch in the socket and the notch in the chip are at the same end. Line up, make sure none of the pins are overhanging, everything's lined up, and there with a good firm push, she's in. When refitting the keyboard, please make sure you don't trap any of the wires. 
the VIC-2 and Lumifix are much higher and the tolerance between the top of the chip and the keyboard is practically nothing. So tuck those wires away nice and safely and the keyboard should just fit nice and snug. So now let's turn it on and start tuning. Out of the box it's a terrible picture, everything is way off, but uh, about 20 minutes of tinkering with the potentiometers and eventually I've got a really nice signal. Each potentiometer has a range of about 20 turns in both directions, so don't worry too much if it feels like you're going too far. And here are the results of that initial setup. I'm sure with a bit of practice and time I can get much better results. I'm very happy with this, the Lumifix is a cheap piece of kit, about £15 on eBay. I heartily recommend you do it if you have a C64 and you're suffering from the banding. Thank you for joining me in the shack. If you like the video please subscribe and hit the bell to get new notifications of content. Leave your comments below and we'll see you next time in the shack. Goodbye.